A new trading week about to kick off right behind me here at the New York Stock Exchange and last week one for the record books and investors they're trying their very best to find out if those record gains will carry over into the upcoming week because last week the blue chip Dow and the S&P 500 already on track to close out a winning week after gaining 0.8% and 0.6% respectively through Thursday. And when you add Friday's gains into the market, well, you have yourselves more all-time highs for both the S&P 500 and the big board and helping grow throughout the week better than expected inflation reads, improved jobs figures, and a strong earnings season, where so far about 90% of S&P 500 companies that have handed in their quarterly reports, 88% of them beating earnings estimates. Pretty impressive numbers, and speaking of impressive, will the record gains carry over into this new trading week? Let's now take a look and see what will likely move the markets in the week ahead. Now we start off the session on Monday overseas in Asia with the release of Japanese preliminary second quarter GDP due out. While over in China, July industrial production figures and retail numbers await. Chinese retail sales expected to come in at 11.5% year over year. Tuesday kicks off in the United Kingdom with British June 3 MILO unemployment figures. The unemployment rate in the UK expected to come in at 4.8%. Meanwhile, in the Eurozone, second quarter preliminary GDP awaits. That's expected at 2% quarter over quarter, 13.7% year over year. And right here in the United States, we have July retail sales figures due out. Expectations call for a read of negative 0.2%. Wednesday sees us over in New Zealand to start off the session with the RBNZ interest rate decision, that of which is expected to rise half a percent from a quarter percent. Then it's off to the United Kingdom for July consumer prices. British July consumer prices expected at 0.3% month over month, 2.2% year over year. And here in the United States, we have several key housing market reports. Then Thursday sends us back around the globe to Australia with the Australian unemployment rate. Expectations call for a read of 5%, while here in the United States we have the release of both initial and continuing weekly jobless claims numbers. And on Friday we close on the busy side. We begin in China with the People Bank of China's interest rate decision, that of which currently sits at 3.85%. And then we also have the combination of retail sales numbers due out of Canada and the United Kingdom. British July retail sales figures expected at 0.8% month over month. Canadian retail sales 4.4 percent month over month also keep an eye on the earnings calendar which is winding down as we speak and also keep an eye on those delta variant headlines which continue to see numerous companies release a mixed statements regarding guidance amid all the covid uncertainty a lot of headlines there and until next week live from the new york stock exchange i'm james swinney reporting for icm <laughs>